Today we will read Ezekiel chapter 2 and chapter 3, 1 to 11. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. For they are impudent and stubborn children, I am sending you to them. And you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns are with you, and you dwell among scorpions, do not be afraid of their words, or dismayed by their looks, though they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, hear, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Now when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside, and written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate, and it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. Then he said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. For you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language, but to the house of Israel, not to many people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language, whose words you cannot understand. Surely had I sent you to them, they would have listened to you. But the house of Israel will not listen to you, because they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces, and your forehead strong against their foreheads. Like underhand stone, harder than flint, I have made your forehead. Do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you, and hear with your ears, and go get to the captives, to the children of your people, and speak to them and tell them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. Amen. 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 So, so, so last week we saw uh, the vision of Ezekiel. God spoke to Ezekiel through visions and through word. So how many of you, you prayed, Lord, I want to be like Ezekiel. I want to see the vision of the Lord. How many of you prayed? So we should pray. I encourage everybody, you know, including myself, we should pray. Lord, I want to see the vision. I want to see the glory of the Lord. So, so we saw, you know, the, the vision, the Ezekiel chapter 1, we saw, the, just I want to recap. And also, I forgot last week, uh, to, uh, because of the lack of time. So I will catch up today. So we saw the, the four beasts. We saw the four beasts, the living creature. The face is one of one is the, the lion and the ox and the eagle, eagle. eagle and eagle. Man. man. So man. So we saw that they each has four wings. And also we saw each, uh, you know, the, the living beast, they have the wheel, the wheel. And uh, if you read here, you know, 18, uh, uh, so wheels in the middle of the wheels. You know, within the wheel, there is a wheel. That's why the wheel can go forward and backward and sideward. He can go all the direction. So God can be in all over the world. So he can move any, anywhere. And also... Uh, 18 uh, yeah, last week I forgot actually so the each uh, you know the the wheels they have full of eyes full of eyes it means so you know eyes can be able to see things so but God is full of eyes it, it's kind of the heavenly picture you can read in Revelation so it means God is omni 
omnipresent, present, omniscient. He can he can watch everything. You know, you know, we nobody can't hide anything. You know, but God, you know, we can hide from your parents and uh, hide from our bosses, but nobody can't hide from the Lord. That's why Joseph, you know, when he was all alone uh, with the lady, what he said? How can I sin against the Lord? Because God is watching. So he understand, Joseph, he understand. He was the spirit-filled man. He understand God is, my God's watching me. So I want to be holy for the Lord. So here, so it means God is watching everywhere. So keep it your mind. When you are doing something, you know, in the hidden places, in the hidden places or in the dark places. So sometimes we feel, oh, nobody is watching. I am the one doing things. If we do, so we should understand who is watching. The Lord is watching. No, we can't hide from his presence anywhere, anywhere. Saying, saying words or thoughts, even our thoughts, God knows our thought. So what are we are going to speak, God knows. So we should be very careful. The wheels are full of eyes, full of eyes. So he can be able to see things. And because the full of eyes, no, even within the heart also, he can be able to it's penetrate our heart and mind. So, we should be aware. So, God want the prophet to understand you are the nation of Israel is, is in the sight of the Lord. And also we saw the only the Holy Spirit is the one led the, uh, the presence of the Lord. So, then uh, we saw above the four living creatures. So, who was sitting? The throne, the throne, God's throne was there. So God is sitting above everything. Nobody can't be in His presence. No, He is unapproachable God, unapproachable God. So, but you know, if you read, the now he, he saw all the, you know, the all the lightning, all the, you know, beautiful uh, color, everything. It's resemble the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. The mighty presence of the Lord. And also, uh, last week I forgot, you know, like the appearance of rainbow. Rainbow. So, rainbow, where we are reading in rainbow? Genesis. 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 You know, rainbow. So, it is. it, is, it remem, rem, reminds the prophet for the covenant. God covenant with Noah. So, what is the covenant? So what he said? He, he will want to destroy the earth. Yeah, so he must take care. So that is the covenant. So the destruction, whenever he see the, you know, the covenant, he always, you know, God will, you know, not completely. He, he you know, though the today, you know, God allow the, the water to destroy some of the area we are seeing, you know, the tsunami is coming and all the, you know, something happened. The river flood, all these things happening. But what God, uh, the covenant is, it, He won't destroy the world completely. That is the covenant. So here God remember the covenant to the prophet. Prophet. So, so it means He made the covenant with Abraham. He made the covenant with Isaac and Jacob, the Israelites. So it means God made the prophet to understand. So the God made the same covenant with uh, Noah. So the same God covenant with the, the forefathers. He said, so I won't destroy the nation of Israel. Though they are rebellious against me. So I have a remnant group. I have a remnant group. So my covenant, it stay. The rainbow, it always remember the the covenant of the Lord. It's a cloudy on the rainy day. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. You know, all these things you can see about the present, the color, the color, the appearance. So everything. So the it remember. So remember. So parents, you know, when you and me, when we come to the presence of the Lord, when we submit and surrender our life to 
the Lord, God will make a covenant with us. So God will keep the covenant for our generation. For our generation. See, that's why it, it, it means about that. So God made a covenant with Abraham long ago. Several, probably thousand years ago. But still, God keeps the covenant. So if God made a covenant with us, with us, when he sees our children, when, see, when he sees our generations, God will always remember. The remember the covenant which we made, which we made, which we offered, which we offered. So as a parent, so it, it, you know, I encourage you and you know, I, encourage, I ask myself, we should make a strong covenant with the Lord as Noah, as all the forefathers of Israel. So here now, the presence of the Lord. So when the presence of the Lord, what happened? So then the prophet, he, he saw it fell on my, he fell down and he worshipped the Lord. He, he fell down. He couldn't, he not able to stand the presence of the Lord. You know, because of the mighty presence of the Lord. You know, um, so always, you know, that's why when sometimes when the preachers, then they preach, you know, just I say, uh, you know, you know, uh, sometimes people used to okay, come and God will come and talk to me. Uh, he put his hand, all these things, you know, just will say that. See, you know, in the Holy Scripture, you can read all throughout the Holy Scripture in Ezekiel and you can read in Eze uh, Daniel also. Daniel also, we, in the presence, he couldn't even the presence of the angel, angel, angels appeared in the, uh, to Daniel. Even he couldn't able to stand, withstand. Because the, the body is not able to made to see the glory of the Lord. We are, we have uh, the disobedience in our heart. So, the, here, uh, and also we can read in John, you know, in a, John is in heaven. John is in heaven. So if you read John 1, uh, sorry, Revelation 1. So in the heaven, he is in the spirit. So in the spirit also, he couldn't be able to stand in the presence of the Lord. So he said, John, I fell down his feet. So, but you know, that is the presence, the real presence of the Lord. So the presence always makes us to be tremble, the tremble, the fear. The fear of the Lord. The fear without when He comes. You can be able to understand His presence. You know when, when, the, you, know, when you can be able to identify the presence of the, uh, and the human spirit. Sometimes people will uh, speak as a human. You know though they call themselves as a prophet. When they speak as a human. You know we can be able to identify whether they are speaking the, their own spirit. Or the presence of the Holy Spirit. The, the, somebody prophesy or, uh, or speak with the Holy Spirit, it always, you know, it, it speak to our heart. So you can able to, your heart will be able to identify that is the presence of the Lord. See, for example, the Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus, he want to see the Lord Jesus Christ. So what, what he did? He climbed, up, he climbed up in the tree and he was watching. So when Jesus, he was passing by, so immediately Jesus said, he looked upon Zacchaeus and he said, Zacchaeus, today come. I want to stay with it. So Zacchaeus, he felt the presence of the Lord. He felt the presence of the Lord. So he, he took him. He took him his home. Even Jesus, he didn't say anything about his sin. See, you are a sinner. You bought all these things. He never said anything. So he felt the presence of the Lord. So when he entered, what he said? What is it? Zacchaeus said. Zacchaeus said, Lord, uh, I will give half of the what yeah. I've taken to the poor and yeah. if I've robbed anyone, I'll give to back to them fourfold. Four yeah, that is the present, the reverence. You know, the presence of the Lord, the spirit of Zacchaeus, he understand the spirit. You know, the, we have the body, soul and the spirit. When the, when the present, the holy God, when he speaks, when, we, he, when he speaks, it always to lead to worship, to tremble the presence of the Lord. See, Moses, he himself said, you know, in Exodus, I was so trembled. I couldn't, you know, that's why the presence, the present, real presence of the Lord, you need to be trembled to give a 
godly fear in our heart and mind. That's why if somebody prophesy, so you, if you feel in your heart, it brings godly fear, godly fear, or it leads to the Lord. Lead your life to the Lord. So you should understand who is speaking. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. But in the human spirit, human spirit, the human presence also, it mimic, the human spirit always mimic like God. God the Spirit. You know, that's why, you know, if you see a lot of prophets, uh, so-called prophet, I don't want to say they are not prophets. So, so-called prophets, you know, they say, they mimic like the, the, the true prophets. You know, for example, the, about the uh, election. So I saw the vision. So the, 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 the sum of the state, it is about to turn red. It is started black. So it is, you know, it's a result, okay? So then I saw another vision. So the same vision, the black, now it's blue. The blue turned, uh, after some time this day, it will red. So it, when you, somebody, feel the present, so it, you know, we can, oh, it may be true. So God is going to change. You change. You know, look like, look like. You know, but the, it, it is not from the Lord. So Holy Spirit speak, it brings the reverence. You can be able to feel in your presence, in your presence. You know, as, as somebody, several people, they talk about the prophecy. Immediately I felt in my heart, this is not a prophecy. So we should be, that human spirit always mimic to bring, uh, you know, that's why the worship, tang, tang, the, all these, all, and uh, and also the, the, what is that, they put, put a smoke. So it, it, it stimulates, the presence of the Lord, oh God is here, oh like that, you know, it never brings the reverence, you know, that's why I, that's why my, my, I want to, under, that's a key word, the presence of the Lord brings reverence, reverence to the, uh, to the Lord, to lead submission, because you can't be able to stand in the presence of you, yourself can be able to understand in your heart, deep down in your heart. And also at the same time, the evil spirit will also bring, when the spirit of the evil is present, it makes you to scary, you know, some of the dreams, you know, make you to scary. Some of the, you know, some, sometimes, you know, I felt sometimes when people come, you can be able to sense in your whole heart, you know, feel they are possessed by the evil. You can be able to, when they started to speak, you can be able to identify the spirit because the spirit of the Lord, it's scary you. It's scary you. It's taking away, away from the, the Lord, the word of the Lord, the Holy Scripture. So you can able to, you know, distinguish because the presence, always, always, the presence of the Lord bring reverence, you know, reverence to lead us to worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. So here, when uh, he, he is not able to stand the presence of the Lord, so he fell down. He, he fell down. Now God want to communicate with Ezekiel chapter two. We saw today. He uh, sorry. We are going to uh, meditate today. He said to me, "Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you." So so today there is chapter two and uh, half of the chapter three. What are the verses repeated? Son of man, son of man. You know, son of man, it's a beautiful verse. It's a, you know, God loves Ezekiel. You know, he, you know, God called only this prophet, son of man, son of man. The same title, Jesus Christ, he used. Even, you know, today I, I'll, I'll put the, uh, in the Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter when Stephen was stoned, he saw the son of man. So, so son of man is the one of the title for Christ Jesus. But God used probably uh, he, he was the prophet. He is, a, uh, he is from the Levitical family, the priesthood. He is supposed to do the priest. Uh, and the, he now God made him to be a prophet. 
But you know several prophets are from the priesthood. Who are the pro what are the prophets from the priesthood? Zechariah. Zechariah is the one and Jeremiah. So you should learn this. Okay. Who is the two prophets? Uh, suppose they are from the Levitical line. The Zechariah and Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And the third one? Ezekiel. Ezek Ezekiel. Okay. So, so now, so if God called son of man, you know, a priest, they will present on behalf of people. You know, present, offering and sacrifices. But the prophet, they speak on behalf of the Lord. That's why when they, when they speak, it leads people to repent. They become on the presence, uh, uh, on behalf of the Lord. So, but, you know, both of them, they, uh, they Zechariah and uh, Jeremiah, they are the same way. But here, God want, you know, several reasons, you can, you know, nobody know the exact reason. Only God knows. So, maybe, you know, all, every, all the prophets are 100% humans. Everybody. You know, maybe, it's a humanly high God want uh, make everyone to understand he is the human. But one of the reason I thought, you know, when I read, uh, so in his time he prophesied about the the destruction of the temple. He is the one prophet. You know, Jeremiah he prophesied, Isaiah prophesied, all the prophet. But he prophesied and he saw probably Jeremiah also may I don't know. Uh, so maybe. So Jesus Christ also predicted the fall of the temple, the second temple. And also he, he, he said about the, the uh, destruction of the whole world. So maybe that one, but I don't know. But the, the, the good thing probably, he was a man. Ezekiel was a 100% man. So Christ also 100% human, the son of man. So now he's now he was fell down in the presence of the Lord. So now God speak to him. He said to me, Son of man, stand in your feet. So he couldn't be able to stand in the presence of the Lord. Able to present stand in the presence of the Lord. So here I will uh, speak to you. So if God wants to speak to the prophet, so the prophet to stand in the presence of the Lord, he should have his own real sense. He should be real sense. And also, he need to understand what he is, God is want to speak to him. So, he want to stand in the presence of the Lord. And he want to understand the word, what God make uh, him to understand. To understand the word of the Lord. And to, to speak the exact word. So, to do all these things, um, he need, who, uh, he need, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one making us to stand in the presence of the Lord. So who said another prophet, I am standing in the presence of the Lord? Hmm? Anybody? Eliza. Eliza, I am standing in the... When he spoke to Agab, he said, I am standing in the presence of the Lord. So that standing in the presence of the Lord. So you and me to pray, Lord, I want to stand in your presence. So if you and me to stand in the presence, we need Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit the third person in Trinity. We want him. We want him to come to strengthen us, to strengthen us. So the Spirit entered me. So the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, when the in the presence of the Lord, all the human strength will fail. All the human strength will fail. The presence of the Holy Spirit is make you and to stand in the presence of the Lord. So one day, you know, you can, you know, people are talking about all the second coming and all these things. So one day, every people, all the people, those who in the world, they supposed to stand in the presence of the, the Lord, the holy throne, the white throne. So if you and me to stand, to stand in the, in the throne before the Lord, if we have the Holy Spirit, so He make 
you and me to stand stand and make you and me to understand where god want to go you want to god will say well done you go then you are able to understand to go if somebody is not able to stand in the presence of the lord they will they can't stay they will they will go automatically to the other side the other side that hell you know that's why the presence itself bring judgment the presence of the lord so here when the spirit entered me when he spoke to me so he saw the presence he saw the presence before he saw the presence he was a prophet he he was a priest but you know the holy spirit entered and make him to stand to understand what god is uh, going to speak the holy spirit prepare prepare the prophet prepare the prophet so and then when he spoke to me and set me on my feet he is able to stand you can see the you know daniel also he fell and the, the person the angel touched daniel so he stand the even the uh, revelation one also john was in the presence of the lord so we need the spirit the holy spirit so we should ask the lord to fill us to fill us you know when you know here you know so the lord is the one making to to be filled with his presence so he saw the vision two part he saw the vision and he need the filling of the holy spirit filling of the holy spirit salvation and the filling of the holy spirit so here he fill with the holy spirit and i heard him to speak to me then the holy spirit give that knowledge knowledge you know sometimes dreams dreams and all these things are the revelation sometimes people will see the dreams so who is the one able to understand the uh, reveal the dreams holy god will re reveal the dreams but the holy spirit he is the revealer of the dream so here the holy spirit when whatever the god spoke to the prophet uh, uh, ezekiel the holy spirit will write everything in his heart and when he go and prophesy he will bring it to memory he will bring it to memory to prophesy and he heard and spoke to me and he said to me son of man i am sending you the children of israel i am sending you you know always always the vision the presence of the lord the the filling of the holy spirit for what to send to send not sitting in the same place and doing nothing doing nothing god why you know that's why jesus command his disciple i am sending you i am sending you father send me and today i am sending you the senders the apostles are uh, sent by the lord so so here god said uh, son of man i am sending you to the children of israel i am sending you to a rebellious nation that rebel against me see that's a see when when you know when 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 god spoke to ezekiel this word he probably he himself you can see the broken heart of the lord broken heart of the lord he loves this people he loves this people you know when i read this holy scripture so you can read the love of the lord you know we always see the love of the lord in the cross of calvary 100% god demonstrated his love on the cross of calvary but throughout the scripture throughout the scripture you know prophecy or warning everything you can able to understand the love of god love of god so here god knows them a rebellious nation god knows them rebellious nation not not only for them they are also like their fathers fathers and uh, they are stubborn children they are they are evil people so evil people so then god said i am sending you to them you shall say to them thus says the lord so 
you, you know God before he sent to the prophet God he himself know he has he is they are the evil people so one would ask then why God is sending to them why God is sending them God knows everything so why so because of the love of the Lord because of the love of the Lord you know um, Uh, so that you can be able to see the love of Jesus Christ. He said, "Behold, I sent you out as a sheep in the midst of wolves." You know, they know they will. God knows the persecution. God knows people will persecute God's children. God knows when you and me, when sometimes when you preach the word of God, when you preach the word of God, though you are led by the Holy Spirit, you know sometimes. When, when people appreciate what we say, when people appreciate, oh, thank you for the gospel. Thank you, sister, you shared the gospel. I am thanking you. If somebody said what you, what you, uh, people will say, yeah, God, the Holy Spirit sent me. That's why I preached. But if somebody, when we share, they will say, they will be angry and mad at, mad at you. Don't chat to me. Go. Like that, if, if somebody said, what you will say? So probably in my own flesh I went and shared. Because of that, they are angry. You know, just why sometimes we feel it, right? See, God knows. God knows. So the people which you and me going to share, they are rebellious people. They are stiff-necked people. They won't listen. They won't listen. So, but why we want to share? Why God, uh, sometimes He... The Holy Spirit will prompt you. Share the gospel to that person. Share the gospel to that person. Share the gospel to the person. So why? Because God loves them. God wants them to return. Probably they, that may be the last day for them. Who knows? Maybe God wants to show His love to them continuously. So you and me, we are sent by the Lord. So you want me to go. And to that, Israel. Israel, the rebellious nation. So, so here, the prophet, God spoke to uh, Ezekiel, make the prophet to understand, when he prophesy, people will hate. You know, the, the following verses he said about that. So, here, uh, uh, God sent the sheep to the wolves. Okay? So, and also, see here, in Matthew 23, Jesus said, I, I, can you read? 23, 34. Therefore, we, I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. Yeah, read. 37. Oh, oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Yeah, see the heart of the Lord. See why they are so rebellious. God knows them. But God wants to, you know, the hen, the hen wants to gather their children. That's the heart of the Lord. That's the heart of the Lord. See, sometimes children, when they are rebellious, the parents' heart will be broken. So, so when we are in the children, you know, when we are, uh, we won't feel when we are in the children. Now we feel, you know, how we uh, rebelled against our parents, how we damaged our parents' heart. You know, now we feel it. So here, we are true father, your loving father, the holy father, he loves his children. He loves his children. He is sending the prophets. He is sending the scribes. He is sending people. Why? God knows them, they will crucify, they will kill. Even He sent His own Son, Son, to gather, to gather. So, you and me, when you and me, when somebody, when you share the gospel to somebody, if they hated you, if they are angry at you, no worry about anything, no worry about anything. Deep down in your heart, thank the Lord, thank the Lord, worship the Lord. How God loves that particular person. How the mercy of the Lord 
went through you. You know, you are, you are sharing the gospel because show the mercy of the Lord. Same thing. You are sent by the Lord. Sent by the Lord. So we should be thankful for the Lord. To God used you and me to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. To bring it back. So, so here God said, they are very stubborn and they are very rebellious nation. As, uh, and five, as for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse. You know, deep down in heart, God knows they will be rebellious. But, you know, within the heart of the Lord, at least somebody will hear. Somebody will hear. Somebody will listen. Somebody will accept my love. Let them be saved. That is the heart. Hear. They hear when they will refuse. And rebellious go. Yet, will know that a prophet has among them. Among them. You know, the gospel. Why we want to send? You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Jehovah witness, the Unitarian people, we should be very careful that evil people, they said, you know, don't preach the gospel. You know, they will quote some of the verse from here and there. They used to say. So, God want to show His mercy. So, gospel to be preached out to all the people. The, the end is coming. The danger is coming. The love of the Lord. So, when the prophet, he speak the mouth of the Lord. So, what it means? The extended grace of mercy. God loves you. Come back. So, they will know the prophet has been among you. So, uh, you know, last week I said, in those days, you know, in the Israel also, they have a lot of false prophets. False prophets always, uh, you know, when people, when, when, when people are about to destruction, when God's anger is about to come to somebody's life, the true prophet make people to repent. It is little harder. You know, when, when we correct it, we can be able to correct our children. We will correct our children. But if somebody corrected us, you know, it's a little very hard. It is very hard. Sometime. Very hard. Most of the time. But you know, when the, when the prophets, when the prophets preach the word, when the prophet preach the word, so it correct people. But correct people. But if somebody, uh, you know, in those days, it's a lot of false prophets. False prophecy always give comforts in when we are doing evil thing. So, you know, for example, today, God will take care of the church. God will, no worry, you can do all the things you, you can do. But if you can give tithe, God will bless you. God will bless you. You know, we can take some of the words, you know, but always, you know, the, that is the false prophet they used to say. So, but if you complete destruction, complete destruction, you know, uh, the, after, after destruction of the temple, we are going to see. So, the Holy Spirit make the prophet uh, uh, Ezekiel to give a different perspective of the message, to give hope. So if somebody in danger, somebody, they lost everything, lost everything. So that time, that time they need comfort. That time, the false prophet, they used to say, because you did all evil thing, it's happened. So the true prophet, when somebody broken and fell down, so then the true prophet will lift them up, lift them up. And give encouragement. Give hope. No worry. The Lord is there. That's why you know the Ezekiel, the second part. Give hope to the, the Israelites. So that is the true prophet. So God said that should be a true prophet. True prophet. You know, though today, you know, uh, about the election. You know, I, I heard only one sister told me. You know, from our prayer group. The election, he is going to lose it. So, God knows that's a true prophets also in among us. True prophecy. They will bring the revelation of the Lord. 
So, we should not always, all the prophecy, all the people in the prophets are false. No. That is a true prophet. So, you and me, to find out the real prophecy, to find out the real prophets and get the word from them. So, that's why the, the word is about, yet they will, they will know that the prophet has been among you. God kept a good prophets also. Though the, the numbers may be different, maybe today's everybody to want to be a prophet. Everybody want to say about the second coming of Jesus. You know, now the prophets have shifted their focus. If you see the prophetical world, now they focused about the election before. Now they are focused about the river, re, re, uh, revival. You know, everybody, they shifted their focus. They will always shift their focus. So true prophets, they will take care. They will give the full picture of the Lord. Full picture of the Lord. So true prophets, true prophets also among us. So, so what is the take home message from this? So you and me to pray, Lord, I want to be a true prophet. I want to be a true prophet. I want, I want to be a true prophet. To be filled with the Holy Spirit. To get word from you. And to preach your word. Though they are rebellious. So God will take care of me. So the Holy Spirit stent us. And His, His Holy Spirit will make us to be bold. Make us to be bold. So then... Uh, and and you son of man do not afraid of them nor be afraid of their words so when you prophesy when you prophesy so the people will throw their word do not afraid of them they will be very angry because he is going to prophesy Ezekiel is going to prophesy about the destruction of the temple that is the prof the first prophecy is all about destruction of the temple when you are going to prophesy about the temple destruction people will be mad people will be mad you know because people will think the the temple is the the present it, it uh, remembers them the presence of the lord how god will destroy his temple his temple so that make people to be angry angry but and also they will throw afraid of their words they will throw the words they throw they, their faces also they will show angry you know when you speak about the repentance when you speak about Jesus Christ is the only true God when you speak Jesus is the only way sometimes people's my heart will be changed people uh, words people will throw the words throw the words which hurt us hurt us you know, God said, you know, they will throw their words. They will show their anger in their faces. In the faces, you can able to see their faces. You know, you, uh, so that's why, you know, today, all the ministry now change their pattern. So if you want to help somebody and you share the good news of Jesus Christ, so immediately they will get things and when you share gospel, what will happen? They will be angry. So when you help them, but if you are not share the gospel, so the people will say, they are very good people, they are helping people. So but, but what you are not uh, doing the exact, we are not doing the exact thing, exact thing. You know, so see, the third one is salvation. That's why the missionaries, they did. So see, Salvation. Remember that one. That is the mission world. You know, they will help and they will take help. You know, that's why the missionaries, they help the community. They build the schools. You know, it's a seep. Uh, and then salvation. So, here, God want to warn them directly. You know, today we change this pattern. That is not the pattern of the Lord. So the pattern of the Lord is, so in a, you know in the uh, gospel, you know gospel, Peter, he never built a school anywhere. You know this is, you know we die, you know it's a good or bad, you know it's we want to help the community, 
we want to uh, you know make the community to be blessed that's a good thing but the important thing we are forgetting the gospel to be preached out gospel to be preached out but the way of the Lord is how we want to preach the gospel get the word from the law preach people will be repent and if somebody repented God he himself will bless God he himself will take care of them he will he will protect them from all evil so he said they will throw their words they will their faces will change when you preach and all their attitude and they will be still rebellious rebellious and uh, uh, but 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 uh, uh, son of man hear what I say to you do not be rebellious like that rebellious house but you you should not be like your people but you are a separated man I separated you you know Christians is there separated life you know that's why when God made uh, the first word itself one of the act of the Lord is what is the act it is the separation that is the act God made light so immediately what he said okay, he said that is, he separated light from the darkness. darkness darkness that is the act of the Lord the word of the Lord created the act he separated he separated so God's children we should be a separated life a separated life God said see these are your people they are rebellious they are going to throw their words and the heart is very rebellious but you son of man hear what I say to you you should hear you know you know we should ask ourselves are we hearing the word from the Lord you know we always in our prayer list you know like a big list we will you know in our uh, in our India we should uh, write all the groceries list and we'll just will go to the grocery shop throw and we will we want to even stand you know we want all these things we will go the same way in our prayer life so Lord will start so now Lord of prayer uh, uh, people uh, you know a lot of prayer guides so we are so clever so initially we will thank the Lord we worship the Lord Lord thank you we worship you then we will switch into the uh, Lord forgive all my sins and all these things then immediately we will come our request Lord I want these things so at the end of the day Amen then we are done we are done you know kids always want to when we ask our children to pray they will be within a few minutes they will come on I am done my prayer <laughs> so so they want to throw something and they want to go but God said you know to hear to hear what God want to say you and me to hear you know after prayer after prayer I encourage you you know you pour your heart to the Lord and stay still in the presence of the Lord. Stay just when you pour your heart, be in the presence of the Lord. Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. You should pour your heart. If you are not prayed well, all your flesh will come. So you should really pour your heart to the Lord. And to be in the presence of the Lord. Lord, I am here to, I am here to hear your word then the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He want to, you know, our God is, we always speak, say our God will speak to us. Speak to us. Did God speak to you? Yes or no? Hmm? Yeah. You should not throw in your word. Stay. Be still. Be still in His presence. Ask the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. So God said, here, what I say to you. So we want to hear the clear direction from the Lord. And then do not be rebellious like the rebellious house. So it means they are not hear the word of the Lord. Though they give their prophecy, they hear the word. You know, sometimes when, when we preach, you know, preach, 
you can see yeah, some of them they will listen very carefully very carefully they are very serious and some of them most of them they will went to third heaven <laughs> they will sleep in the <laughs> so so here here god said you you should hear you should hear and what god said to them to hear listen carefully god you when you come to the presence of the lord you yourself ask the lord lord speak to me you will speak to me we always say about samuel samuel said lord speak to me here i am your servant lord so what it means we should always come to that kind of childish heart that is the important childish heart you know childish heart to wait to hear i am ready i am ready to hear so here but the the people they will say the rebellious people they will because they are rebellious they are, they you know sometimes when we preach people would shut their heart uh, shut their yes that's why uh, when john the baptist he said about the vipers you know you the children of the vipers yeah because they are rebellious your heart you are you was you was you are hard heart that's why you are here and then open your mouth eat and what i give to you so then you should open your mouth eat it hearing and the the word which we speak the meditation to give come to the heart heart you know meditate so today he he preached the word so what he preached about so parents you know always i encourage you when you go home on your when kids are there inside at least few few minutes you can ask them what they what they hear today message what is their take home message you know my mother always ask me after when i come back from church what is today's message what he said about it so he always ask me so so the message we always we always come and say good message we always to have a to in, uh, to uh, understand the head knowledge but here to come down to eat it meditate meditate you know the the cow cows or a sheep they will when they will eat very fast and they will go down somewhere and sit relaxedly and they chew it bring it back and they chew it the chew it so he speak like that it is real or not so we should eat it eat the word and hearing and and uh, eat the word and then you should be able to digest it and then put it into practice to preach or preach it or preach it you know for preachers always you know every time when i meditate i always pray for myself myself lord anything heard the points which i am going to lead lord have mercy upon me you know all the prayer points which are all the prayers after the message i am reading uh, in the in the messages i used to pray for myself lord if anything hindered anything i am not disobeyed help me lord help me i want to digest the word for myself i want to digest then only i can able to preach the preach so we should be very careful here god said open uh, do not open your mouth eat it and give to you so i encourage all the children so the memory the words you are memorizing that is a greatest blessing okay so the word which you are meditating and memorizing you should ponder about in your heart just like that throw it and going you should so i i meditate and i memorize all the children i am encouraging you ha huh? so today i memorize this verse what is about this verse so whether how the word will apply to my life so whether the the word has any sense to me so you should ask yourself and and meditate the word 
and also put into practice. So here God said, open your mouth and eat and what I give to you. Now, I looked there was a hand stretched out to me, behold, scroll of the book was in it. The scroll, God has a scroll, God has a pre-plan. He, before he laid the foundation, before he laid the foundation, he has a plan. He has the plan. You know, that's why sometimes people, the preachers will, uh, the, sorry, the prophets will prophesy. So, this will happen. So, they will say, because you are not prayed, this, the prophecy is not true. No, it's not there. Prophecy, prophet, prophecy, that the spirit of the Holy Spirit is amazing gift. When the Holy Spirit fills that, that, that call for the prophets is, the, the prophecy will, the gift of prophecy when he operates, he will take us to read the scroll. The scroll. You and me to read the scroll. Help us to understand the scroll. What is written for him? What is written for the her? What is written for this particular season? What is the things happening going to come for the nation? So it's already written. So the gift of prophecy, they are not saying their own mind. They are reading from the scroll. So here, so here the prophets, he is reading the scroll of the Lord. The scroll, it is already written. God wrote. God wrote. Nobody can prophesy. God already wrote. So God is the one able to change things. God is the one able to change. When the prophecy, the scroll is written, then he spread it before me. And there was writing inside and outside. The written on the lamentation and mourning. And oh, that's a, you know, the, the writing, the prophecy about the nation of Israel. It is, it is a lamentation and mourning. And oh, that is the message he is going to share. You know, we always to share a good message. You know, for me also, you know, I, I, you know, God sometimes reveals good thing. I will share it. If if not, you know, you know, it's sometimes very hard to share uh, the things. You know, the the bad things. We want to share it little, diluted, and we want to. But here, it is a lamentation and mourning. And all these things can be changed only the people, the Israelites, when they repent. Only repentance can change. Repentance and intercession for the prayer can change. And here God said this, this uh, about the scroll. Um, so here they are uh, they are about the the people of thorns and scorpion. I want to uh, I forgot this one. So they are thorns, the people among the Israel, they are thorns and the scorpion, you know scorpion, it will bite, the bite and the thorns, it is the, it want to destroy somebody's life. You know when we preach the gospel, when we preach the gospel, so when people are like that, they are, they, they curse sometimes, they want to destroy the scorpion. But God give that authority over scorpion. God give the authority to destroy everything. You know that's why um, uh, Luke said, in God, Jesus said, Behold I give the authority to trample on the serpent and scorpion. You know if you read in Deuteronomy, God led them, the Israelites in the wilderness. So in the wilderness you can see snakes and the scorpion. So both are two will ready to harm. So, so, so sometimes, you know, if I preach the gospel, then only the scorpion will come and bite me. So if, if I not preach the gospel, well, I am so happy. But in your, you know, journey, in your journey, in your, in our day-to-day -day life, you can see the scorpion. Scorpion is the, you know, it is the, the spirit of evil, the spirit of evil, will enter into a person. So the person, so that person, that evil will, through that person, it will spread the venom. You know, that's why the scorpion, when it hit, the
the, the venom is coming, the biting. So that is the spirit of evil. The spirit of evil want to destroy God's children. Through it will come to a person's life. When some person yielded his life, the venom will come out. But God give the authority <coughs> over everything, you and me. So we should not uh, afraid of the scorpion. Scorpion. <coughs> but uh, sisters will say, yeah, we will be, we will trample scorpion, but uh, we will fear cockroach. <laughs> so we will trample scorpion and snake and the cockroach also. <laughs> we should not afraid to anybody, anything. So all these things, all these things will be, God give the authority to everything. So that's why God said, you know, you can see I put the same prophecy uh, to the uh, Isaiah prophesied. So now God said uh, in the third uh, verses, uh, in the third uh, chapter, so now the people are so rebellious, they are stiff hardened. Now what I am going to make you to make the prophet to change, his heart to be changed. And his mind to be, uh, you know, so the God strengthen the prophet. You know, that is the amazing grace and gift. You know, God strengthen the prophet. So now God, God, he heard the messages. You know, we saw the he was eaten the scroll. It is sweet. And uh, now he digested, he digested. And now he is about to prophesy. And send the unfamiliar, uh, you know, God here said, I am sending you to the, the people which they speak the same language. You know, say I am accent, everything they will speak. I am not sending you as a people without a different language people. If I sent a different language people, they will accept it. That's why, you know, it's about, uh, so, you know, like for example, Jonah, he prophesied to Nineveh. So, they accepted Christ. They accepted the Lord. So, sometimes, when we speak to the Christian crowd, they will be, they will be very rebellious. But you, sometimes when you speak to the, the, the non-Christian crowd, they will have the fear at least. At least, you know, non-Christian, they have the, at least they have the fear of the Lord. That's why, you know, Brahmins, they will, uh, make others to kill Christians, but they won't do it. But they have the fear. They know God. Jesus Christ is the Lord. They know that. That's why the, they have the fear. So, the people will have the fear of the Lord. All the people, Indians, you know, they have the fear of the Lord. So, so they probably will accept it, but they are very uh, rebellious people. That's why it's about. But here, God said, now I am going to Harden your, uh, behold, I have made your face strong against their face. Strong against the face. God will change. You know, when God calls a particular call, that's why we should find out our call. And find out the call. Whatever God calls us, we want to do it. Because of the grace which God calls. That's a call. So we should, you know, if I can't uh, take a different person's call, I can't do it. Because in the particular call, God gives that kind of strength for the particular person. You know, so that is the call. So here God said, I, I made your face strong against their faces. So when you preach to somebody, when you preach, the, when you want to share to somebody to about Jesus Christ, so you should ask, we should ask, Lord, I am going to share the gospel to that person. Help me, the, give me the grace to whatever they throw, help me to understand it. So if we should ask ourselves to receive that grace. Here, God said, he made him, you know, so they are so rebellious, if they throw several verses, Ezekiel will be happy, happy, because God made him like that. You know, sometimes when we, when sometimes we are so, our life, you know, our relationship is the, 
uh, it's a kind of glass. When we broke, when we it fell down, it's broken it. But if God calls somebody, God calls somebody to preach and to do things, God will give that boldness. Give the boldness. You know, for example, God, the Peter, Peter and all the apostles, they are so afraid when Jesus Christ was crucified. But the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit came. They were bold. Bold, you can read it. They were filled with the They are very bold. They are very bold. So, so you and me to ask the Lord to give that kind of grace. You know, sometimes I always wonder how people are sharing their uh, gospel in Iran. Iran. And even in North Korea. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. You know, the, if somebody found out he is Christian, they are completely killed. Not only for them, whole family. Because the grace of the Lord, the call, the call, God will, you know, the law, you know, it's not, it, their heart is soft, their heart is soft, but, you know, whatever they, the, the evil will throw, it won't penetrate in their heart. That's a, that's a, you know, that's why when Jesus Christ was in the, in the standing, people will throw all the evil words, but nothing when enter. So you and me, when you and me, you should ask Lord to give that strength to when you preach the gospel, share the gospel, to pray for anybody. You know, sometimes when you pray for to anybody, the spirit within them, it will bring attack. So when you pray before that, you should ask the Lord to give that kind of uh, prayer. You know, you know, that is the call. If somebody, if, if you are not able to comfortable, if you are not able to stay strong, it's not called, it is better not to pray that. You know, sometimes, I felt sometimes, sometimes when we pray for, you feel the presence of the evil before us. The, the spirit, you can able to identify the spirit of evil. So when you completed the prayer, you want to pray it again, pray it again, and to overcome that spirit. So that is the call. So when God calls, He will give that grace. So, you know, that's why when God calls, He put in the, in that place, He give that exact grace. Exactly. If not, if not, this will be destruction. Destruction. So, here, God said, I will make your face too strong and you are forget, strong dear forget, like Adam and stone, hard in their feet. I have made your heart. God will know. God knows. The call. The call. So you and me to pray uh, the Lord to give grace. See, the, the one thing we will finish it today. Stephen. Stephen. Uh, we know in, in Acts chapter 7, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He preached the word of the Lord. He preached the word of the Lord. It's a beautiful sermon. It is recorded in Acts chapter 7. But here, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. But he is being full of Holy Spirit. Stephen was full of Holy Spirit. Full of Holy Spirit. And he saw the vision of the Lord. That uh, heaven opened, saw glory of the God, uh, God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He saw Son of Man. Not man, God, he saw Jesus Christ. And but the people around Stephen, see, this is how they are the they cried loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him at accord. They are um, teeth biters. What is that? Gnashing of the teeth. What is that? Oh, 54. Okay, yeah, same. So the heart, they, they are, they are garnished their heart. Uh, yes. See, you know, sometimes if somebody garnish, when you, you know, even children, when they disobeyed, if we garnish, what we have? This is the spirit of evil. So the, the, the Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit man. He is, uh, the, the other side people, they are filled with 
evil spirit you know the in the in the jesus said in the in the hell hell the people are yeah this is the same spirit so it means these people are they are filled with the evil so sometimes parents we love our children sometimes when when they disobeyed without our knowledge we will do this right so we should not do that when i was uh, meditating that's why when i saw i want to say this one try when i meditate this word today so we should ask ourselves that is uh, that is not from the lord that is the spirit of evil that is the spirit in the hell so here a man filled with the holy spirit surrounded by the evil people but god made stephen to bold bold and also god made stephen to forgive them forgive them they are stoning them they are stoning them but he prayed he opened his heart he never looked at their people he never looked up the stones he looked in the heaven he looked in the heaven he saw christ and he prayed for them prayed for them and he forgave them that is the grace the same grace god gave to ezekiel so you and me need that grace need that grace how we can get the grace not our own strength not with the salvation experience salvation you know we are children of the lord salvation the second step is amazing to be filled with the holy spirit the holy spirit is the one give the third dimension view of the lord when he comes so he will take us so as the parents sometimes you know we need that dimension when you handle with your children so for me i need that direction sometimes you know we should garnish our teeth we should not do that we should ask the lord to forgive that sin against our children so this is about the chapter you know what is the take home message today so you and me to be a true prophet like is a gift to be filled with the lord to be filled with the holy spirit so people may be thrown everything we will be stay with the lord to be filled with the holy spirit so we want to get receive the word from the lord to preach the gospel of jesus christ let's close our eyes